Good evening. Um, I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Action Parks and uh, Recreation Commissioners to order on December 16, 2023. Um, we just uh, uh, can, uh, we just came out of executive session related to real estate, and as it was an executive session, no decisions were made at that meeting. So. Uh, First uh, order of business is a approval of minutes. And there is one change that needs to be made in the minutes. Uh, the date on the minutes is incorrect. It says October 4th, and I believe it should be November 7th. The study session, yes. No, it, 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 what it says, what it says, uh, well, maybe, it's, maybe, it's a, maybe it is, sorry, November 1st. But it says October 4th, and that's incorrect on the document that you have, uh, that you received. So um, if someone would like to make a motion with that uh, change. I move to approve the minutes uh, with the change as specified by Chair. Second. Thank you. Uh, all in favor, signify by aye. 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 And uh, next on the agenda is additions and deletions to the agenda. And uh, there, is, there is one change the um, uh, parks and open space map is being changed from action to informational. And that has to do with the, uh, we, we didn't have a study session this month. And so we didn't have an opportunity to, to discuss this in, in a study session. So we're going to uh, take this opportunity uh, to uh, discuss it tonight. And um, it, it will come on probably in January for uh, for a decision. Uh, next on the agenda is, oh, yeah, we have, uh, we don't have anyone signed up for our general public forum. We have uh, a sign up for a specific item. Um, and since we don't have anyone to speak, we'll move to the next item, which is the consent agenda. Yes, Commissioner Bachman. Um, I'm gonna, asked to pull a uh, second item and discuss it separately, but I will um, make a, move, a motion to uh, uh, acknowledge the advisory committee minutes uh, as the uh, entire consent agenda now. Second. Okay, uh, all in favor signify by aye. 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 Okay, uh, so that's uh, been passed and uh, Let's see, we, we move that, that item to the regular, um, to the business part of the meeting, we correct? We can do it right now. Yeah. Oh, we can do it right now, great. Um, okay, so um, alcohol use in parks policy, updated language. Um, do you, does the staff want to make a statement or just? No, I'll start it. Um, I pulled this because it's a little more than an ordinary uh, consent item typically would have. In the packet, there is some uh, language changed in the the ordinance uh, that we took, that uh, our director took to the council. Uh, and they, they approved it on first reading, but asked us to make some changes in two areas, um, security requirements and preferred locations. And rather than um, pull that packet out and read those changes, which are very legalistic, I uh, ask our interim director to kind of explain what changes were made in the plain English. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so as uh, Commissioner Bachman stated, City Council was um, largely in support of the ordinance language, which is very broad. Um, that will allow parks, uh, allow alcohol in parks under very limited circumstances, but they were, um, had a couple of concerns about the internal APRC uh, policy document that dictated the terms of how that would um, be carried out. And so um, Councillor Hyatt brought up a concern regarding potentially adding preferred locations or venues for where uh, events would take place, where alcohol would be served. 
uh, and um, a couple counselors, Councillor Bloom and Dale, um, wanted a little more language um, explaining how security decisions would be made, particularly how if a security, a private security firm was required, how that would, how that decision would be made. Um, so I would just like to state that currently when we have special events, there's no alcohol in parks, but we, we already involve, um, we have a, a special events team, and that includes APD, the Ashland Police Department, and if necessary, will involve legal. So um, none of these changes or anything that, that I would, uh, that I think I've heard commission um, be in favor of these, and we're just making more explicit what already occurs and what commission I, I believe is largely in favor of. So the language here that is suggested um, lists preferred locations, and they're kind of the, uh, the usual suspects, Lithia Park Banshell, Ashland Japanese Garden, North Mountain Park Pavilion, and the Oak Knoll Golf Course. Those are appropriate places for large events. Um, and then it says that other proposed venues shall be reviewed by the director or designee on a case-by-case -case basis. So it doesn't preclude other, other locations. Um, the other one just essentially states what is already occurring and what will continue to occur, but it codifies a collaborative relationship with Ashland Police Department and legal when um, security decisions are, are being made. Thank you. So um, with that, I will move that we approve the alcohol use in parks policy updated language. Okay. Oops. Go ahead, uh, Commissioner Steffinger. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to understand when Pioneer Hall and the communities that are come back online, are they included as uh, places where alcohol can be served? I'm going to let Deputy Dials answer that. Um, it's a slightly different. It's handled in a slightly different way. But here's what uh, you, you are. You're correct, Stephanie. Um, or sorry, uh, Commissioner Steffinger. Um, uh, alcohol is allowed both in Pioneer Hall and the community center. And when those facilities are back, brought back online, um, if APRC is, um, does move forward with operation of those buildings, alcohol will be allowed in those buildings. Okay. And we don't have to As put that in this ordinance. It's, it's already been, okay. it's, it's that, part of that's the all I needed. facility Thank rental you. process that's already been approved. And the reason for that is because they are enclosed spaces already, correct? Enclosed spaces, yes. Thank you. Okay. I will second the motion put forth by uh, Commissioner Bachman. Could, could you actually uh, repeat your motion? I will. I got interrupted. I move that we approve the alcohol use in parks policy updated language. In other words, we're approving the language, <laughs> the updated language for the alcohol use in parks policy. Second. Uh, would you like to speak to the motion, Commissioner Bachman? No, I just wanted to. Uh, I, I just wanted to make sure we got out to, to the public and uh, made clear among ourselves here that that this is codifying a longstanding practice to work um, collaboratively with various departments in the city, and it's nothing new. We're just writing it in, into uh, explicitly into the policy. Commissioner. Uh, I'll just briefly uh, add to that that um, I appreciate the work of staff that it um, I think the language is really nice that it both points to intention uh, and uh, continues to hold flexibility right so that we can work with community partners that want to hold these events um, so I think it was very well done thank you uh, anyone else want to speak to the motion roll call vote please Steffinger? Yes. Adams? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Bachman? Yes. Lawn? Yes. All yes. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, next, we have a really um, uh, fun part of our meeting, uh, which is awards presentation. And it's actually pretty amazing what uh, these awards. And so I will uh, let. Uh, uh, Deputy Director Dials, uh, yes, uh, kick us off. We're we're working in concert here. Um, okay, well, so we're, and <laughs> buckle director. up. We've got a presentation <laughs> for you. Okay, thank you. So exciting. Um, 
Ashland Parks and Recreation is proud to announce not one, not two, not three, but four statewide annual awards this year, um, recognizing key partners, staff, and volunteers. So uh, I will announce all four award recipients, and I think most or all of them are sitting in our audience. Um, and then after, all I've, after I've announced all four, if you would please come up to accept your award and stay for a group picture, photo op with staff and commissioners. So the award recipients are first, uh, the Oregon Recreation and Park ORPA Volunteer Service Award goes to Kathy McNeil. This award honors an individual whose efforts as a volunteer made a significant contribution to parks and recreation in the state of Oregon. In the past two years, Kathy McNeil has logged over 700 volunteer hours with Ashland Senior Services Division well above any of the other 1,500 volunteers that assisted Ashland Parks and Recreation during that time. McNeil has volunteered with Ashland Parks and Recreation since 2018, helping at events, making outreach phone calls to vulnerable and isolated seniors during the pandemic, serving on the Ashland Senior Advisory Committee from 2021 to 2023, and doing critical office reception work when budget cuts led to reduced staffing at Ashland Senior Services Division. McNeil was nominated by APRC event and coordinator and volunteer coordinator Suleiman Shelton and APRC Senior Services Coordinator Natalie Mettler. We do not have to hold our applause. Um, another ORPA, Oregon Recreation and Park, Park Association, um, Section for Older Adult Resources, or otherwise known as SOAR, we love our acronyms. Um, Outstanding SOAR Management Staff Award goes to our very own Senior Superintendent Eileen Glatt. This ORPA Section Award recognizes leadership, innovation, creativity, and dedication in providing older adult resources. Glatt has served as Ashland Senior Services Superintendent since 2018. Under her tenure, the division's accomplishments include building partnerships with other agencies to increase opportunities for older adults, recruiting business sponsors to offset costs and extend programming opportunities, expanding division programming, education and events to serve diverse audiences, maintaining and improving Ashland Senior Center facility, overseeing extensive special services for older adults during the COVID-19 pandemic and organizing vaccination clinics to overcome access barriers for older adults in Ashland. Glatt was nominated by APRC Senior Services Coordinator, Natalie Mettler. Okay, award number three is the AARP Andrus Award for Community Service goes to Anne Bellagia. This award is given to one individual per state, recognizing an outstanding individual, age 50 plus, who is sharing their experience, talents, and skills to enrich their communities. Bellagia is a founding member of the Ashland Senior Advisory Committee, which advises the Ashland Parks and Recreation Commission and the City Council on the needs of local seniors. She founded and co-chairs the Livable Ashland Alliance, which is working on all age-friendly livability improvements for Ashland. Bellagia is also a, a long-term volunteer with Osher, Li Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, or OLLI, at SOU, and served on the Regional Senior Advisory Council for Rogue Valley City of Governments. Bellagia was nominated by APRC Senior Services Superintendent Eileen Glatt. And last but certainly not least is the Oregon Recreation and Park Association, ORPA, everyone should know it now. The Private Sector Partner Award goes to the Rogue World Music Festival. Um, this award recognizes a business entity, corporation, or nonprofit organization that has made significant contribution to the parks and recreation profession in Oregon. Rogue World Music is a successful nonprofit organization that is building community and cultural connection through world music. Since 2017, Rogue World Music has partnered with Ashland Parks and Recreation to produce the Rogue World Music Festival. 
Uh, Rogue, Rogue World Music was nominated by APRC Recreation Manager Lonnie Flora, and they put together uh, a short video that uh, we'd like to show. I think we might have some audio. Hello, my name is Anna Byers, and I'm the executive director of Rogue World Music, an Ashland-based 501c3 arts nonprofit that serves all the communities of the Rogue Valley and Jackson. Is the PowerPoint thing open? We might need to close that. Sorry, you guys. Presentation. You got it. Close the presentation. Yes. I just did the end. Hello. My name is Anna Byers, and I'm the executive director of Rogue World Music an Ashland-based 501c3 arts nonprofit that serves all the communities of the Rogue Valley and Jackson County. A special thank you to Lonnie Flora, Rachel Giles, and the entire APRC staff. Nominating Rogue World Music for the 2023 Oregon Recreation and Parks Association Private Sector Partnership Award was an honor in and of itself. The fact that we won is directly connected to the amazing collaboration between RWM and APRC on a beloved and groundbreaking community event, the Ashland World Music Festival. By leveraging the strengths of each entity, we've created a free community event that serves thousands of people each spring, supports our local economy and small businesses, showcases an incredible diversity of representation, both on stage and off, features world-class culture-bearing artists, and creates opportunities for folks to learn, connect, and have fun. RWM is a small organization. We focus on projects articulated by community need and collaboration. APRC support with this event allows us to lay foundational work like starting a community steering committee, curating incredible artists, and bringing more stakeholders to the production table. We consider ourselves so lucky to work with APRC as we move forward with taking this community building opportunity to its fullest potential. Thank you again. I'd like to take this moment to invite our award recipients up to the uh, the stage here uh, for a photo uh, award to receive your award and to have a photo with the commissioner. So, commissioners, if you wouldn't mind also stepping up for for a photo op up front, mm -hmm. another side. Yes, yes. You can try. <laughs> We're gonna go in the middle over here. Okay, after that fun interlude, uh, now we're going to get uh, a little bit drier, uh, but probably It'll not still be totally fun, dry. don't worry. Uh, our, uh, director Eldridge will uh, provide our director's report. Found it. Okay. 
to the other side, maybe? Yeah, I, I moved in there. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Enter APRC interim director's report. Um, I'll go through administration and then the three divisions. As usual, lots of uh, exciting, interesting things going on. Um, the first is, this microphone is not great, I apologize. The second is um, in administration. Uh, just a reminder that we have three legislative initiatives moving through the legislative process here in city government. So the alcohol and parks ordinance, which was just discussed previously, is one. We have a parks hours ordinance that is up for first reading at the, um, at the next upcoming city council meeting and the parks and open space map, which will be um, discussed later uh, tonight. And very, very excited to announce the f arrival, the long awaited arrival of our two brand new APRC staff members who are here today. Um, we have Kevin Caldwell who joins us as our park superintendent. Uh, we are very lucky to have Kevin who comes to us with 15 years of previous parks experience with city, county, and state agencies. Uh, spent six years as a senior project manager with Ashland Public Works where he gained his professional project manager national certification. Kevin's worked on several, several projects in Ashland, including the new Ashland water treatment plant, the Ashland Canal piping project, and others. Kevin attended Oregon State University, graduated with a degree in natural resource management, and most recently was a project manager at Medford Water, where he managed large capital improvement projects from concept to completion. So we are extremely lucky to have him. Uh, Kevin, could you stand up just so everyone knows who you are? Hi, Welcome. Happy to be here. <laughs> We've already got him working hard, uh, sending millions of emails and spinning him around into all the parks. Um, and we are also equally thrilled to welcome Nancy Miro or Mero? Mero um, as our new executive assistant. Um, Nancy grew up in the Rogue Valley and first came to Lithia Park when she was a tiny tot of five. That's more, that's not really a tot. What is that? It's a kindergartner. Um, she recently returned to Ashland. Yay, we got her back from Seattle where she worked for the Seattle Housing Authority for 12 years. We are most excited about having Nancy come on board because she has touched and worked in the areas of all three divisions that we have. She worked as a landscape gardener, a community builder serving seniors, and um, as an administrative assistant to the program administrator of the maintenance department. So Seattle Housing Authority provides and maintains over 8,000 units of housing for 35,000 plus people with low incomes. So we're confident that Nancy's gonna have some amazing tools in her tool belt to, to offer us as well. So Nancy, if you would stand. All right, more fun stuff. Um, City staff, including us, had a lovely holiday lunch sponsored by the city this afternoon at the Ashland Hills Hotel. And I was honored and pleased to present the Employee of the Year Award for Parks and Rec to Tara Kewell, who has been a rock of and steady, reliable person throughout a year of incredible change and transition. She's been the glue that's held APRC together. And so I was thrilled to present her with the Employee of the Year Award. Also at this event, um, our fabulous recreation manager, Lonnie Flora, was robbed of the Ugly Sweater Award. And we wanted to acknowledge his incredibly ugly Christmas sweater here at this meeting. So I hope you can appreciate it. <laughs> it is truly ugly, but worthy. So the guy on the left is the one who won. That's, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. 
Recreation. I've been talking about, I can't stop talking about the Ashland Rotary Centennial Ice Rink because I love it so much. We have an event, First Frost Community Event is coming. Be there December 16th, starting at 4 p.m. We have figure skating performances, a live DJ, discounted skating admission, and much, much more. Um, always a super fun event. My, I know my kids and I love watching the performances. It's just really cool to see people do aerial uh, in real life, because I've never seen it other than on TV. Um, some really amazing local talent, just a super fun, family-friendly event. More in recreation. Um, we have uh, made the decision to, and we're in December now, so the golf course um, is closed for this month of December. We have identified several key maintenance projects that will be getting done during this time, which is traditionally a very slow time for the, for, for the golf course in general. So um, um, we'll be doing those maintenance projects as well as dealing with some trees, um, some, some tree mortality. Um, starting in January, we will be uh, closing on Tuesdays just for the month of January. Again, that's traditionally an extremely slow attended day of the week. So um, we'll be trying that for a month. And then um, now that we have Kevin joining us on board, we're catching him up with the negotiations with the management contract and the, um, and the parameters around the uh, maintenance of grounds. So. We're um, we're going to be working on that contract and um, and re bringing back our conversations with golf automation to make sure that we're adequately addressing those ma grounds maintenance issues. Nature Center, we are slowly and but surely um, working to in, to uh, increase the capacity and the accessibility of Nature Center to the public. We're happy that we're adding yet another day of um, times where the Nature Center will be open to the public. So we will now be open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. More in recreation. Um, we have a brand new recreation register software that the rec team has been absolutely spending huge amounts of time and training and working to get online. This is going to very much simplify um, Parks Rec staff ability to, um, to track, to register, and to get data about recreation programs. It's much easier to use. Anyone that's used ActiveNet knows that it can be quite cumbersome and, and costs us, you know, it costs us people. And um, so it will, and it has more capabilities, as I mentioned, it has the ability to do some um, data, data crunching and survey um, and assessments, as well as um, provide us with um, just much easier, more easily accessible information. Uh, so yes, RAC and senior services teams are training. They have completed training. And we're going to be rolling this out on January 3rd. So it's coming right up. I'm really excited about this. We think it's going to be make a big difference in how we process um, not just programs, but potentially events and other things in the future. Play Guide is coming. It's coming to your mailbox. Always the wonderful present three times a week that we, three times a year, not week, that comes in your mailbox um, should be coming out again in early January. Okay, moving to senior services. Um, senior, uh, seniors are invited to a festive holiday party, aptly named ho holiday party, uh, at the Ashland Senior Center, December 22nd, 2 to 3.30. Um, Village at Valley View is the event sponsor. They'll be providing festive treats, cookies, and beverages. And Ollie's French car caroling class will perform familiar Christmas carols in French. And Rotary Club of Ashland will provide gifts to the first 60 people who register. So hurry up and register so you get your gift. And the number here, 541-488-5342 uh, uh, to register for this lovely event. Um, I should have put these in opposite order because that's the future. This is the past. Um, Senior Services had a really amazing event where the Ashland Firefighters, um, Local 1269, uh, served up pie and coffee um, to 
for for giving thanks um, at the senior services at uh, the senior center, and firefighters donate this time, and this is an annual tradition. You may have heard in the paper race recently that our beloved Superintendent Glatt is moving into a new retirement phase here. I think it's January 5th, uh, Eileen Glatt will be retiring after five years of incredibly fantastic service to uh, Ashland Parks and Rec. Uh, she was first hired as superintendent when APRC Commission created the Senior Services Division in 2018. Trying to to better meet the, need, meet the needs of Ashland's growing and diverse senior population. Um, Natalie Mettler, who, is, um, who has been with the Senior Services Division now for several years, will be moving into the interim superintendent role. So we congratulate Eileen on her retirement and we're very excited to see Natalie move into a leadership role. If we could ask you to stand so we could acknowledge you, um, the two of you, Natalie, Natalie too. So this was an acknowledgement of the change in the guard. So uh, farewell, and, and it, it, it's not really welcome because you've been here, Natalie, but uh, uh, I, I'm sure Eileen is happy that she's leaving things in good hands. Absolutely. And I, I just want to say one thing. I want to, um, I want to correct myself. Uh, this was not dry. <laughs> it was uh, delightful, your director's report. Um, so. I I'd said it was going to be dry after the war, oh, yeah. and, and I was everything. I was totally wrong. Is there is there anyone in the audience who has not yet been recognized? Because I'm. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, exciting! Let's talk about the Daniel Meyer Pool Liner Replacement Project. It's done. More reason for celebration. So, um, and it looks absolutely gorgeous so they're i don't know how to pronounce the name of these contractors but they um installed the pvc membrane system you can see the before and after pictures you can see the condition of the pool was quite in a, quite a sorry state um this was a very much needed um uh, job it started november 13th ended november 27th and our parks crew is is very happy with the results as as i am sure our patrons will be as well project cost a bit over around sixty one thousand dollars and this was a project that the commission had approved last fall and if i can just interject that Please. the the temperature was a cool 65 degrees <laughs> this morning was the report so so for those that are not aware, the pool is not open to the public during the winter season, but we do have some hardcore users that lease, um, that lease the pool, and that's the Rogue Valley Masters mm -hmm. and... Uh, Phoenix High School and Ashland High School for their swim teams. Yeah, kudos to them, the Polar Bear Club. Oh my gosh, so um, we had a fantastic um, specialty Japanese garden um, a contractor who's skilled in pruning of ornamental trees come and spend all of last week um, in the Ashland Japanese Garden. Um, her name is the the lead of that company is Francesca Snyder, and uh, she worked with our park staff. You can see in the fluorescent coat that is Noel Tempe, who is our um, Japanese garden gardener. Um, she spent the week with Francesca and her team, and in addition to pruning, staff member Pete and Noel received valuable training, which they'll be um, passing along to staff and to, uh, to guests and docents. And Francesca will be uh, returning in May for spring pruning. Um, she'll be potentially coming twice a year to, um, to give that expert, provide that expertise in um, authentic pruning in Japanese gardens. Um, here's a bullet that I obviously forgot to elaborate on. Um, in terms of trails, we have a brand new mountain bike trail, um, mountain bike reroute that um, is up on the Alice Ridge property. Um, Ash, uh, Rogue Valley Mountain Bike Association. Uh, this, this trail was approved at the last meeting that, uh, that commissioners had and volunteers as well as APRC staff uh, over the last month built that trail. It's not particularly long, but I've ridden it a few times and it is 
um, a wonderful beginner trail and it um, allows the private property owners who have been waiting for this reroute to occur to finally have the trail re like located on their on the easements on the legal easements and will likely be closing that original what we have been calling the Alice Ridge Trail maybe closing that to the public sometime in early January um, Rogue Valley Mountain Bike Association, in collaboration with staff, decided to call the reroute Mimsy. For if you are familiar with the Jabberwocky, you know that all Mimsy were the Borogoves and the Momraths outgrabe. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Mimsy. <laughs> And this is a really beautiful one. Um, commissioners may remember um, Alex Lant, son of our of our chair here, coming to the commission. I do not know how long ago, maybe six months ago, um, to re last January a year ago, um, to request a non-standard memorial bench to honor Tal Eason, um, who was a good Samaritan, passed, was murdered uh, on the Portland Metro when trying to defend two Muslim girls that were being harassed and threatened. Um, Alex and, and other friends that were childhood friends and lifelong friends of Tal Eason um, took this coastal redwood slab, which, is a, which I <laughs> actually donated. It's a tree that lived its entire life in Ashland um, and spent <laughs> Innumerable, innumerable amounts of hours um, crafting this beautiful and artistic um, tribute to Taliesin. And if you can find it, it's south of the Ashland Japanese Garden, hidden in a spot where Taliesin and, and Alex and his friends um, used to play and, and as, as children. And it's um, the, the rainbow and the insignia has a beautiful, has a beautiful quote. Um, and we just we're, we're just so pleased and honored to have this in Lithia Park. It's it's a work of art and it honors a very special human. So that concludes my director's report. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, first quarter of 2024 financial update. It's not fun anymore, is it? No, this is fun. <laughs> we can talk about money. Financial. If I can find it. Okay. Can you clarify what time period that is? I will in my first slide. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so um, when we talk about the first quarter of the fiscal year, we are referring to July 1st, 2023. That's the actually was the beginning of this biennium um, and it's fiscal year 24. So July 1st, 2023 to September 30th, 2023. And um, Ashland Parks and Recreation traditionally waits until the finance director provides a full first quarter financial report to city council, which happened at the last city council meeting. So now that we have those finalized um, um, results and the report from the finance director, we're coming to you with that first quarter financial report. Um, so I'll just start by kind of listing some of the changes that I believe commissioners are familiar with that um, we had a lot of changes from last biennium to this biennium as to how we account for money, where money is and, and other types of changes. So uh, the APRC operations budget, which used to be a separate fund, is now part of the city's general fund. Um, rec and then here, here are some more. Oh, and I'll kind of skip to the bottom bullet here since we're talking about more city focused stuff. Their parks used to pay a, a central services fee for the use of um, administrative, legal, HR, all of these departments that we interact with on a regular basis. Um, this biennium, there was a change in that where that central, those central service fees were removed from the budget, um, from, from the park's budget. Um, it just basically meant that our admin 
budget didn't wasn't a million dollars more than it than it was not a million dollars more to account for those central services fee. Uh, the recreation administration budget, we did away with that and added that to to the administrative budget. So our recreation staff are paid through administration, not the recreation line. Um, the parks operations line includes all facilities and maintenance expenses for divisions. Uh, temporary employees are now included in the professional services expenses of MS for each division. Uh, recreation programs, nature center, senior services, and golf recreation, they all, those only include recreation program costs. So if wondering why there's changes from one biome to another, these a lot of buckets have sort of shifted around. Uh, when we look at revenue, uh, there's less revenue categories than there have been in the past, so those have been streamlined. Uh, the Parks Equipment Fund uh, was dissolved into the city's general fund. System development charges, SDCs, we've talked about this in our CIP discussions. Those SDCs were separated out and are being um, accounted for separately, so into an individual fund. So a lot of these have been discussed and you, they may or may not make sense when looking at the first quarter financials. I can try to go into those if, if necessary or desired. So I'm gonna start, just start off with some key summary points here that, um, that uh, Tara and I sort of gleaned from these first quarter financials. First, great news, APR spending is on track for the first quarter. Um, total spending is 25% of budgeted for fiscal year, which is exactly what we want since it's a quarter. We're looking to spend 25% uh, every quarter. Uh, there are areas where spending is below target and where you see those, they're almost always explained by staffing vacancies. Budget challenges, on the other hand, where you see uh, potential overspending in certain areas, are primarily in operations, um, in materials and services, and most specifically facilities maintenance and general maintenance. So if you're wondering what the specific areas are that we are challenged, um, not surprisingly, vandalism, theft, the repairs and replacements, and staff time that goes into dealing with those is a challenge area. Seed and fertilizer costs, those costs have risen exponentially over the last few years. Um, professional services, that encompasses a lot, contractors, temps, um, open space, forestry and weed abatements, a lot of forestry work that's had to get done, um, as well as training. This is specifically staff training. This is an area that has traditionally been very low across the entire city. Um, it's something that uh, concerns, concerns me uh, in terms of a retention, um, training, retention, and staff morale tool. So those are the areas that um, we have our eyes on and that we're, con we're concerned about. So this was in your packet. Here's APRC operating expenses, again, from July 1st to September 30th, 2023. And, um, you know, I'm happy to answer questions, may refer over to Tara, just, um, I guess I would point to the operations M&S, uh, some of them are very hard to see, they're very light and I apologize, but if you look at some of these percentages on the right uh, column, you can see some of them are, are higher than 25%, remember our target is 25, um, we've got uh, operations M&S is at 42%. Uh, some of that is um, seasonal in nature. So a l some of these items are about seasonal expenses. So that one is mostly uh, irrigation and water costs. Uh, it looks like, let's do, I'd rather answer questions than just ramble. So, so please, Commissioner Just Bob. a clarification, I hope. Um, we talk in terms of a biennial budget, but I'm looking at the grand total APRC operation expenses at 25%. So this is for, these numbers are the first fiscal year. So this Correct. is a one year statement, even though we have a biannual budget. Just wanna be sure Correct. everybody understands that. Thank you so for that clarification. Net is kind of right where you'd expect to be. Exactly, thank you for making that clarification. 
the other thing that I was going to point out is you see an item that says equipment under operations at 115 percent. This is an electric truck that we have been waiting for for a very long time. Still not sure when we're going to get that. The intent is for that is for our boulevards team to be able to charge uh, battery powered blowers and, and gear. And um, we are anxiously awaiting that um, that truck. <laughs> Any questions on operating expenses? And or I can go on to revenues. Okay. So revenue projections that we see in the um, in the adopted budget. Uh, are based on the average of historic actuals, where, uh, what revenue has been. And that, I, I would add that many of them are extremely conservative based on some pretty rough years that we've had during COVID where sometimes there was no revenue coming in for various items. So um, when we look at revenue, we're dividing that into three categories. Um, grants are one type of revenue that we receive. Uh, maintenance agreements, this is, like an example would be the Ashland School District renting uh, sports facilities or, um, or access uh, access to the pool, um, as and then the last is fees or charges for services. Um, we between fees and revenue, um, the the. We have budgeted about a million dollars. I think we're going to do much better than that. Uh, just to sort of point out some of our programs and services that have been doing really well. Commissioners voted for a, a small fee increase in CAE revenue, so we are starting to see some um, recouping of costs in maintenance of the CAE, and so uh, that is higher than was budgeted. Uh, we also see. Um, I have trouble reading across these lines here. Pool programs, um, obviously a seasonal, a seasonal activity, uh, doing well. And then, which, which line is this? Recreation events. This eight thousand. I my my understanding is that is almost entirely from the Fourth of July fun run. So we can expect this number. I think to be much higher. Than, than it has been in the past because as we all know, things are coming back and activities are, we're starting to hire and we have plans to stand up more events. And so we're um, expecting to increase our revenue in all of these, in all of these uh, categories. Uh, senior programs, I wanna give a shout out to them. They've done amazing job bringing in revenue, being able to pay for extra staff even with some of their cost savings and are already at 55% of the year of what they were expecting to bring in for programs. So they've done an amazing job um, as have all of our staff. The ice skating rink is just doing great. Um, I guess I'll pause and ask if there's any questions on either expenses or revenue for first quarter financials. I would just, sorry, I would just note that the rink just opened and so that's why you're not seeing any year to date revenue yet. Um, we just opened a couple weeks ago. So that should all start be, be rolling in now. And I would also mention that the the lease, any lease agreements for the Daniel Meyer pool. Um, so all the off season things actually go directly into um, as revenue into the pool program line item, uh, revenue line item. So you'll probably be seeing that as well pretty quickly. Thanks so much, Rachel. Um, also worth noting that finance director is embarking on a large um, citywide revenue study that will include parks and we'll be interested to see um, what what her uh, assessment is of um, current revenue generation and potential future revenue generation. Okay. Um, I wanted to bring back the CIP uh, update, updated budgets to 
just show you um, the final numbers based on the motion that Parks Commissioners made at the last meeting. Again, I apologize, these are a little tough to read. Um, what I find helpful is the variance here. And you see how each of the five items that were discussed at the last meeting, so that's uh, trails, the uh, Ashland Creek Park basketball and sports court, uh, the Oak Knoll golf course, and the All Parks Master Plan, as well as Daniel Meyer, Daniel Meyer Pool. Those are the five uh, line items in the CIP budget that were identified as with by staff as items that had some flexibility. Um, Last month, there was uh, a motion to reduce all five of those by an equal percentage. And when staff dug into the, the numbers that we were looking at um, last month, we did have to make some corrections to make sure those were accurate. And we came up with um, what amounts to, I think it was a 47% deduction, 46% deduction. Um, or thereabouts, we had to we had to make it work so that the numbers, um, so that we come to the correct uh, updated allocation totals, and that the, um, but it's roughly 46% reduction from those five line items. So um, the highlighted numbers here shows you what that result is. And am, am I not correct in that you were talking about how you had to make the numbers work and you actually added a little bit to trails and to Ashen Creek Park. Um, those numbers were actually bumped up a little bit so their percentages is actually a little less than. Is that, is that, that's what I thought. I think I pool was added a little bit too and Ashen Creek Park was added a little bit too. Is that? Correct, it's Tara, can you confirm? Equal. We're talking about like there was about $9,000 to spread. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> it's close to equal, but there was about $9,000 that needed to be reconciled. So it was equal in our food and beverage line um, um, to what was allocated. So that got put into um, that little difference into yes. the basketball court and the, uh, cool. the trails. Oh. Yes. To so, reconcile so, the total numbers. So, an ex so $9,000. So, so it isn't. It's that would mean if you did the math, th those percentages would be a little less uh, for those. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any final questions, observations on that? All right. Thank you. Is, is that the end of your presentation? It is. Okay. Uh, there's, unless there's other questions on the, yes. This, this might be an inappropriate question, and if it is, just let me know. Uh, I was wondering about the Senior Center and North Mountain Park being able to have wine events if they wanted to. Is that included because they're closed options? Would that be allowed? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I, I, I heard it. Uh, Commissioner Steffinger was asking about facilities like the Senior Center or North Mountain Park having having wine events indoors, and I do not know the answer to that question. Deputy Dials, do you have a? I don't have. I don't have an answer to that question. Um, I'm not sure we have ever had um, alcohol in either of those buildings before, so it's something that we would have to come back. And take a look at and talk to staff. At, 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 at one point, we were going to have uh, dinners there, even um, to use it more in the evening. And it was it was talked about having wine at that time. So that's where it came from. So, so those are great questions. Um, they, you know, they were. That's not what we're discussing right now. I know. And uh, it, and I think that that staff can uh, will. I think it's reasonable to get answers to those, but you're not going to get them tonight. That's fine. Okay. Um, that being said, we're, we're on to the next agenda item, which is uh, parks and open space map, which uh, will be an imp informational um, discussion. And I believe you have a public comment for this item. I, that... gonna, I, I, want, to, I want to have uh, the staff report first. And then, um, and then public comment. Okay. 
Okay. Um, some of this language is slightly altered since this is, this is now an informational item as opposed to an action item. But um, at some point in the future, uh, well, today you're looking at the official parks and open space map, a draft of it, uh, and we're uh, looking to take feedback from the commissioners on on that map. Um, if when that map is approved, it will go to the Planning Commission, it won't be December 12th at this point, it would probably be in January, February, and then on to City Council. Uh, the Parks and Open Space map is a part of the City of Ashland's comprehensive plan, which is approved by City Council, and it's a guide for APRC land acquisition and provides for a range of uses, including neighborhood parks, potential sports fields, open spaces, trail connectivity, and riparian areas. Uh, the plan was first drafted in 1991, updated and adopted for the comprehensive plan in 2002, and in 2012, a light update was uh, performed, meaning that it did not become part of the Ashland Comprehensive Plan. It didn't go through Planning Commission or City Council, but was used for internal purposes um, and strategies. Um, in May 2022, we had a Parks, Trails, and Open Space Plan Update Subcommittee, which um, spent uh, about five sessions looking at the 2012 light update and discussing uh, properties that should be included in the plan. A lot has changed since 1991 when this plan was first created. At the time, Ashland had less park per capita, park land per capita than Roseburg, Medford, and Klamath Falls. Now, after 30 years, Ashland's per capita park land is one of the highest in Oregon. And additionally, um, one of the stated goals of the city's comprehensive plan was to have a neighborhood park uh, accessible within a quarter mile of all residents uh, within city limits. And uh, except for the, for one exception, the mistletoe or Croman Mill area, uh, commissioners have deemed that sufficient property has been obtained to meet this goal. Uh, strategies and uh, lands identified for future purchase do not focus on the creation of parks, as we just sort of discussed. Instead, this uh, map represents a pivot to an emphasis on protection of significant natural areas like streams and riparian areas, lands on the wildland urban interface critical for fuels management, but that also offer recreational opportunities and trail connectivity. This map is designed and intended to be used in conjunction with the Ashland uh, Parks and Recreation Trails Master Plan, which identifies critical bike and pedestrian corridors in the city and was approved by City Council in 2020 as a technical report supporting the parks, open space, and aesthetic chapter of the City of Ashland Comprehensive Plan. So the Trails Master Plan is currently part of the um, Ashland Comprehensive Plan. Uh, in the map, which I'll show in a moment, we have two versions of the map, which I'll explain, but both of them have a corridor called the Trails Master Plan Corridors Layer. And that is a, it's representative, and I'll just go right here, you can see the purple, um, I know Commissioner Adam likes to call them lateral parks. The delineation here of these lateral parks that represent um, critical linear, linear parks. Linear, <laughs> linear parks. Thank you. Um, these critical connectivity points, and um, we have. I can't even read it from my slide, but we have an asterisk next to that layer, and. It says something like, but I can't read it myself, that this map is intended to be used in conjunction with that trails master plan. So essentially, um, it, when, when acquiring or looking at easements. So um, we have a situation where there are two guiding documents that need to be used together. And the trails master plan, which is rooted in, this, in these corridors, each chapter is dedicated to each one of these linear parks. Um, and plans for them when APRC commissioners go to strategize or look at lands to acquire anything that's in those trails master plan corridors is fair game, is part of the strategy to be acquired or, um, or easements, um, easements secured, donated, et cetera. So um, we received uh, several 
uh, communications from the public concerned about the Central Pike Park, the Central Bike Path, and um, the way this is set up now, everything along the Central Bike Path from the west side of town to the east side of town would be considered identified for acquisition or for securing securing easements. So we have two maps in front of you. Planning Commission asked for two representations. So the first map is what we are calling a comparison map. That shows uh, in, in sort of a bright yellow properties that had been identified in the last version, that's the 2002, the last official version of the Parks and Open Space map, um, which was then called the Parks, Trails, and Open Space map, um, that had been removed, that had been recommended to be removed from the map. So, and the next version, which we're calling the official version, is much simpler. It has all the properties that have been removed, which amounts to about 277 acres, just have been disappeared. So now the official map only uh, contains the properties that are recommended for purchase. So um, that was so that Planning Commission and City Council can see properties that we have recommended for removal. Um, this is the official map. You can see there's a place where the mayor and the city recorder sign it on the bottom right hand corner. So uh, I would uh, like to um, Particularly the, the, this official map document, I would love to get some feedback on it, how you feel the visual is presented, and um, anything else that you would like us to consider before this comes back to the par Parks Commissioners for approval. I just wanted to clarify, uh, I wanted to make sure that I heard you saying the, so the uh, the paved bike path that runs through the center of Ashland is is that under parks jurisdiction? I read the comments from the the public on that, and I realized that is that considered part of roads under the city, or is that considered parks? I, I would also, the by the way, as far as trails go, also accept longitudinal parks. Longitudinal. In addition to I love it. Linear. They're all great. <laughs> longitudinal parks, linear parks. Um, I think the answer is it depends. There's some parts of the central bike path that are maintained um, and that are parks property. There's others that are city. There's some that's railroad. And it's a bit of a hodgepodge. And of, I think that's, does anyone else, any staff have more to add on that? <laughs> it's a hodgepodge. That's your official answer. Other comments? Um, I want to point out, so this has been a, uh, a challenge, I know, but if you look at the map, you look up there, and all the purple, the trail corridors, if you actually just took the reality of how many acres that is, that's, I'm guessing it's hundreds of acres. And I just want to point out that um, at least I, I can't imagine um, under any circumstances, we'd be purchasing that kind of property. It, it just needs to, you can't just, for example, have a very narrow strip that just includes like on the, uh, the north-south, that just that um, corridors, mainly those, mostly those are uh, creeks. So you can't just put the creek in there because you're not gonna, because you're not going to put the trail on the creek. And you can't just put one side on there because you might need to take a bridge and, and go from one side to the other. So, um, and in some cases, you might have to actually leave the, um, the creek and move off and around for a short period. So for all those reasons, um, the map shows um, all that could be, uh, could be used, but it won't be. That's, that's way more property than um, um, we, I, we need that I can ever imagine. I don't think anyone else could imagine we we need for trails. We just need to designate an area, and within that area, we need a trail. And if all we and easement is the ideal, um, and if we have to, we could buy the property. But ideally, we would just get easements for this. So I just want to point out that this could look like a a lot of of property, and and give some people heartburn. And I'm hoping to. 
um, make the case that we have no interest in purchasing all the property that's shown in, in purple. Yes. It, also, it also appears that the purple is a standardized width um, that uh, that's, I would imagine in, in 90 plus percent of cases is going to be by orders of magnitude wider than is actually required. You know, your, your good example of, of a creek might be, e even then it would probably only take a, a portion of it, but, but a more standard, you know, sort of pedestrian or bike easement would be you know, qu quite a bit smaller than than this artistic rendering uh, shows. I wanted to address one more thing I forgot to say, is that you may have noticed that the name of the map, and I'd be interested in feedback on this, has been changed from the parks trails and open space map to the parks and open space map. And this was something that um, our planning director suggested because, as you may notice, we don't have any trails on this map, actual trails delineated. And really, what we're doing is just sending a bookmark to the trails master plan. So there was a decision made to call this the parks and open space map with the intent that the trails master plan is to be used in conjunction with that. So that's the uh, rationale behind that change. Thank you. Um, of course, I have a, a counterpoint to that, which is um, back in 2002, the name was changed to add trails and um, that was done in a public process and at this point the the change has been made um, uh, really more at the staff level and my concern is that um, it might look like we're de-emphasizing trails by not including on there and yes I agree with our staff um, and Director Eldridge that um, this isn't a trails map, but to say, but we do show, co show corridors just the same way we show property that we don't own, but it's what we are looking for. So I think there really is a reason to leave that um, as is. Um, it, yes, it doesn't show all the, all the trails. Um, in, some, in some places it shows a, a property that we would either buy or we would just get an easement for trails. Um, but it either does it either does that or it shows the purple corridor. So I don't see a problem with changing that uh, with leaving it the way it was, which was with trails in there. But I'm really curious about other what other commissioners think. Yes, Commissioner Bachman. Um, I think I would favor leaving trails on it because we are referencing where we would put trails. So it, it's a prospect, prospective trails. Um, and it speaks to what we do, which is parks, trails, and open space. So um, I think I like trails on there. We're not we're not taking a vote, but um, but we 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 are uh, staff is going to if, if probably if there's three commissioners or more who think that, that it ought to be there, uh, then they will work towards that end. And if there aren't, then they won't. Commissioner Staffinger. I, I think because it was originally uh, shown to the public that way, um, that there um, would be a reason to leave trails on there. Uh, yes, Commissioner Lewis. So your suggestion is, uh, to, what would it, what would the caption be then? Parks, trails, and open space map. Yeah, I would agree with that too. Uh, those who know me will be shocked. I do not have a strong opinion, and so I would, <laughs> uh, I would go with the rest of council. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, one, uh, so great, thank you for that feedback, very helpful. Um, we can make that change. I'd like to add one other, um, um, one other issue. Um, as you may have noticed on the comparison map and on the maps that APRC approved, there was a, um, a narrative that went along with it. So it's 
an eye test at the moment, but along the right-hand side, there is a narrative that was approved separately with, with language. And um, that narrative has been cut, and in the official map, there's only the explanation for each one of the lands that are identified for, ac for acquisition. Um, the, uh, there has been a suggestion made as to whether that text should be preserved and turned into a, um, a uh, technical document in support of the, um, the, the parks, trails, and open space map. So if commissioners want to see that, we can take that language. I think there's some updates that need to happen on it and some refinement that needs to happen to that language. But we can bring it back as a technical support document that goes along and tells the story of how, why, what, when, and where to be accompanying this map, if that's a desire of the commissioners. Can I just add that um, another way of talking about the technical document is it would be um, from a planning standpoint, it would be called part of the findings. Mm -hmm. Comments from commissioners? Yes, Commissioner Bachman. Um, I think it's a good idea to have that um, formalized because the process, uh, this, this map and this, when we approve it, is a 10-year document and it's real easy to lose track of how we got to where uh, with the turnover of personnel on this commission and in staff. So I think the more, the easier we make it for people in the future to put together the puzzle, the better. And I think having that document uh, created is a good thing. I would like to add that uh, it, it's, it, it helps with transparency. It makes it easier for the public to, in fact, if I had my, my way, I think it ought to be on the map itself. But there are some reasons, I guess, not to. Uh, the planning objected to that. But um, that would be the most useful place for it. But the second most useful place so people in the future could find it would be to be officially in the findings. Commissioner Staffinger. Do, do we know why there's some reason that it can't, can't be included? I can address that. Um, essentially, it's a, it's it's not um, traditionally the format. So there's several maps within the Ashland Comprehensive Plan. So it doesn't uh, quite fit the visual format. The other is that it's a, it's a very very long written piece on a map, which makes extremely small text, and um, really kind of detracts, I think, from the visual uh, effect of the of the map. So um, those were the two reasons behind that decision. Thank you. So we still, we need to figure out whether we're going to, um, uh, the two commissioners I've heard um, support that. Uh, or, uh, actually, Commissioner Steffinger, did you have an opinion? Yeah, well, I, I support the uh, trails map being included with the other map. We're talking about the, the, the language, the supporting yeah, language. I, I support what you want. Okay. The findings. The findings, yeah. I'm, I'm supportive as well, as, as outlined by you and Commissioner Bachman. It sounds like we have, uh, uh, you have enough uh, direction that you can move forward. And again, yes. uh, just re re uh, reminding everyone, this, this, uh, we're treating this like a study session item. We're not making any votes, but, um, but we do need to give staff direction, so that's why we're kind of uh, um, straw polling, just to see what people are thinking. Um, now, oh, Should we, we kind of, uh, before we, I, I actually, I didn't realize quite how the format was going to be because I thought there would be, there was going to be a uh, um, presentation and the um, uh, staff report and then there would be discussion later, but it all turned into one. So we're a little late, but I want to make, before we get off this item, and, and I'm willing to make changes based on, on uh, uh, input we see from the public still. So I would like to um, ask uh, Gary Schaff to come forward, uh, please. And uh, I understand you want to speak. Uh, and while we're waiting, uh, Mike Gardner, do you want to come up and speak? And, and if you can limit it to three minutes, that'd be great. 
if you can. Thank you, Commission. Members and staff. You know, I just wanted to say as an individual that along with uh, Commissioner Lewis that spent several years on the trails master plan, I, even though the, the map isn't up anymore, uh, you know, the, the, the purple corridors were important connectivity um, guidelines, if you, if you will, for, for the city. Not necessarily that there was going to be a trail down each one of those drainages, but it kind of showed you where the, where the, where the connectivity was, whether, whether you'd be on a, a street or a trail or a path you know, an easement as you, as you mentioned. So I just wanted to make sure that, that that was clear. But then also, if you refer back to that map, you'll see down the Ashland Creek corridor is where there's still properties that are available to be, or hopefully in the future to be purchased, to have a bigger, better trail connection on those, on those important parts or along Bear Creek too. You'll, you'll notice that's where, where all those properties still exist in your map. So I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is Gary Schaff with us? Okay. Um, thank you for the input. And uh, um, if there's any other comments you want to make. Okay. Um, moving on to the next item. It is um, 2024 uh, meeting schedule. And I'm not sure, is that your item, uh, Director Eldridge? It's, it's all of our items. I'm trying to find the... <laughs> so I think there might be... Uh, Commissioner Lamont, you, were you saying that there was an identified... There was yes. one, at least one date that was incorrect Two in here? dates. The September date should be the 4th and the 11th. Okay, September 4th and September 11th. And then um, there, so there's a couple items here. There's February 14th, worst day of the year to go out to dinner. So it might as well be here, but that's, I'll leave that to commissioners. Um, and July 3rd is another one that may want to consider. It's a time when a lot of people travel or go camping or whatever. So I would just point those out if there's any interest in changing those. Um, anyone have any uh, opinions? I don't. It's fine with me. So we're, we're just going to leave those dates. You can always now, adjust it. And, and that is true. If we, um, what we normally would do is if we would come uh, close in on a date that's maybe problematic and realize we didn't have um, a lot of items for it or no items for it, we could, we could uh, make a change at that point. But at this point, it sounds like uh, commissioners, um, well. I, I'm ready to make a motion. <laughs> okay, let's hear your motion. Okay, I move to approve the 2024 meeting schedules as presented to staff with direction given on special meetings as a need to convene them arises. We want to fix these two dates. I'll second. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I just have a question for staff. Does that uh, motion cover the changes that you that you just made? Okay. I believe so. Okay. A any uh, any con let's see, who seconded that? Okay. Our our, our Mr. Second tonight. <laughs> um, so, uh, do either of you have any? Um, Anything you want to say about the motion? I, I think continuity in meeting times is helpful for the public. Yeah. Yeah. I'll add that I'm excited to hang out with all of you guys <laughs> in 2024. <laughs> okay, roll call vote, please. Seffinger? Yes. Adams? Yes. Lewis? Yes. Bachman? Yes. Lawns? Yes. All approved, motion passes. Okay, uh, next on the agenda, Ashland Parks Foundation Annual Report. Good evening, commissioners and staff. Um, bef before I start, yes. Um, we need to introduce you. Um, 
Mike, Mike Gardner. Most everybody knows you, but there might be someone who just tuned in who doesn't. So welcome, Mike Gardner. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one thing I just I just want to say now, sitting through the whole meeting, is it, it's really important that all the commissioners speak into their mic when when you're up there talking. I'll have to admit that a, a lot of what people say, I couldn't hear back there. So you might be able to hear it, but uh, the public can't. But um, once again, thank you for having me here tonight. So I'm here to update you on the past year of the Ashland activity with the Ashland Parks Foundation. Um, as Rick pointed out, my name is Mike Gardner. I'm the current president of the uh, Parks Foundation Board. And um, it's, I think it's appropriate that um, we're here tonight, or I'm here tonight, to um, give you an update on what we've done this past year because you just went over your first quarter financials. And um, what the Parks Foundation represents is all that potential money that can come to parks that isn't in your budget. Um, grants, donations, uh, money that comes in from various places that that is not contained in your budget, but it helps to support the, the multitude of facilities and programming that, um, that Ashland Park and Rex tries to undertake every year. Um, it's been a busy year for the Parks Foundation. Uh, the completion of the Japanese garden uh, last October, uh, you know, I, I guess it's the soft completion because it, it's actually not completed, but it was open. It's open to the public. It continues to, um, to, to be uh, a, a source of enjoyment for Ashland citizens and visitors alike, as well as uh, somewhat of a, uh, um, uh, a revenue generator with the donation box and quite frankly the occasional donation that comes in to the parks foundation from individual donors that specifies that that money is going to the ashland um, the japanese garden so there's a lot going on there uh, the, the the foundation um helps sponsors the uh the uh, um the japanese garden group that uh, that you that Director Eldridge has been working with, uh, and Suleiman works with to try to come up with ways to, to generate pure, further revenue for for that project. So that that was a big thing that's ongoing, and it'll be ongoing for the next several years, I'm sure. Um, we also have been uh, sponsoring uh, Micah Blacklight in the Say Your Names, um, crystallizing on our ancestors, I think is the name of the project. Um, the Parks Foundation um, has, has granted that project uh, $16,000 towards his goal of $160,000. So not necessarily seed money, but we're hoping that he gets to his goal and then the Parks Foundation has, has, has stepped up to, uh, to help fund that project as well. Um, we also um, created a, um, a smaller uh, restricted fund for the pickleball users to be able to donate to uh, the Parks Foundation to hopefully um, grow a fund that would be available to APRC for future needs in the pickleball community. That's something they wanted to do. It's smaller than most funds we create, but we decided to do it. You can go to the Ashland Parks Foundation webpage and you'll find the explanation on the pickleball and you can go to that page and donate and um, raise funds to hopefully uh, enhance the um, pickleball offerings here in Ashland. And then um, probably the biggest uh, undertaking we took this year was kicking off the um, Butler Parazzi Fountain Restoration Project that um, kicked off on July 4th of this past year. And uh, Commissioner Lewis is, is on our steering committee along with um, eight other uh, members of the community that have stepped up to really try to um, get the word out to the public and to um, raise the necessary funds for that for that future project. 
Um, we've been in discussion in discussion with uh, D Director Eldridge, and most of the commissioners know, you know, what we've been doing on that project. To date, we have um, 206 individual donations towards that project, totaling over $560,000 so far on the way to our um, campaign goal of $800,000. An important part of that $800,000 is a $200,000 maintenance fund that um, over and above the cost of the uh, restoration of the prop of the Butler Prozzi Fountain that we think is critical moving forward, similar to um, the discussions we're having over the Japanese Garden and what we're going to do for um, you know for maintenance in the future as 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 these um, as these projects get completed and people start using them. So, you know, the Parks Foundation is really just a pass-through for public donation, donations that people that want to support Ashland Park and Rec. They, they know how important Parks and Rec is to, to, to our community. And um, I'm just happy to say that, that we're here with a really a strong foundation. Um, some of the other projects that have uh, donations have come through the um, foundation for other projects are the uh, kids climbing cable uh, structure in Lithia Park. That was a $10,000 um, pass through from uh, Ashland Parks Foundation. Uh, awning for the ice rink, uh, flooring for the senior center, $333,000. Benches at North Mountain Park, about $9,000. Uh, uh, you know, the pickleball, New fencing in Lithia Park came through uh, donations through the Park Foundation. Um, uh, world Music Event, there was a $5,000 donation from, from the Parks Foundation to that. Um, we hired our first employee um, this year uh, after uh, utilizing the expertise of uh, Sean Sullivan for, for years and, and paying APRC for his, for his good work. But uh, now we have our own... Um, administrative person uh, helping us along. And, uh, you know, we advertise in the play guide pamphlet that uh, booklet that you talked about earlier today. So, you know, there's a lot of ways that uh, the Ashland Parks Foundation works to support Ashland Parks and Recreation. I mean, that's our sole purpose. That's, that's why we exist. And, and I would just say that it, it's, it's been an excellent year. I mean, we're talking not tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands but millions of dollars that have come through the the foundation for projects like the Japanese Garden uh, hopefully the project for the Butler Parazzi Fountain all of those um, projects that are um, important to the citizens of Ashland and really make um, Ashland Park and Recreation a strong, stronger organization so thank you for your time I just kind of wanted to update you and any of the look, viewing public on what we've been up to, what we're doing, and uh, um, hopefully we'll be successful uh, raising all the funds for the Butler Proxy Fund. That's that's our main focus right now, and we're working dig diligently with uh, not only park staff but uh, internally to to get those funds raised. So, any questions? As, as a matter of curiosity um, for the public, uh, Steph, can you talk? right into sure. the microphone am i doing a better job now okay all right um is uh, are these tax tax deductible and do any of them qualify for the cultural uh heritage grant well the ashland parks foundation is a 501c3 nonprofit. so so any any funds that are donated to the foundation for any of the projects are tax deductible donations and um, I'm not exactly sure how to re answer the second part of your the question. The cultural trust? Right. I don't know if it's uh, one of those. Um, it's the, actually on our, on our list of, um, since we didn't make our goal by December 31st of this year, which was our original goal for the Butler Prozzi Fountain, yeah. we've, um, we've, we've got a list of grants that we're going to apply to, for in the first half of 2024 because that's when most of the granting cycles start 
So um, we have a list of about eight, eight different. Um, is is that what you're speaking to? Uh, yeah, I I just wanted folks to know since this is December, if they uh, wanted to make a tax deductible. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. You mean the, so you're right. talking about like through the Oregon Community yeah. Fund? Right. 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 Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Not really a question, but uh, I can't miss an opportunity to uh, to say thank you and to your colleagues and you know Ashland Parks Foundation this year has a lot to crow about, and I appreciate you uh, you sharing those with us and a lot to be excited about, especially a uh, a new historic uh, fountain uh, in a really special spot in our park. Yeah, should be. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Last on our business uh, items is uh, look ahead review. This is normally done in the study session, but uh, there isn't one this month, so we're doing it now. Well, uh, just open to feedback on the look ahead. We've got a lot of um, new topics to take up in January and um, hopefully we've started to take a stab at those items. We, we really only have through February some potential items. So if there's any um, particular agenda items that, that uh, commissioners would like to see, it would be nice to see if there's uh, a majority that are interested in addressing those items as well. I, I just wanted to um, say I'm glad to see uh, the pool, Daniel Meyer pool showing up on our first uh, study session in January, which is less than a month away that we're going to begin to, as it says here, review uh, the replacement plans and next steps. I think that's really important that we make progress on that. It's a big project and take a long time to get it going, but we need to just keep going at it. Um, and then it would be nice. I'm also seeing Oakdale Golf Course on here, which we need to get resolved as well, the contract, uh, management contract. So well, we've got work to do. <laughs> I had a question. Uh, re remind us what goal one is. Business practices. It's the Daniel Meyer pool, right? No. Not the first one? <laughs> goal that's number one is best management practices. Yeah, yeah, best management. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, scheduled to come up um, in February. Good. Well, I don't hear any other suggestions. Uh, I think we're, the look ahead stands as uh, as uh, uh, presented. And then now it's time for items from commissioners and staff, if there are any. Commissioner Adams. I just have a brief comment. Um, we didn't comment on the director's report, but I can't resist having, since we're actually ahead of 8 o'clock for once, uh, the opportunity to just shout out the group of people who showed up to build the new Mimsy Trail. I was there that day. There were at least 50 people with shovels and clouds and picks in hand that knocked out a trail in one day that we were expecting would take two. It's a really nice trail. Uh, particularly want to shout out uh, Seth Rand, who's one of the property owners uh, whose property that goes through who spent uh, many hours before during and after that project uh, to make a trail happen on an easement on his property just incredibly generous um, and uh, and it's a neat new trail if anybody hasn't gone out uh, and ridden it um, so just wanted to shout out all those folks Oh, looks like people are ready to go home. <laughs> um, so uh, we have, the only upcoming meeting that I have is uh, the Recreation Division Advisory Committee is scheduled to meet Wednesday, December 14th at Lithia Park Cabin at 4 p.m. This is Thursday. That's a typo. Um, it should be Thursday, uh, December 14th. Thank you for that correction. Okay, uh, with that, uh, meeting is adjourned. <laughs>